Happy Sabbath. Happy I guess that it's working, right? This one is working and this one is working. Well, my name is Walter Castro and I'm very honored to be this morning with you. But you need to understand something before we begin with the word. More than a hundred years ago, somebody from here, somebody from here in the States, came to Argentina. 1894. It was a German pastor, the first pastor that came to South America, especially to Argentina, with the message of the second coming of Jesus Christ. Amen. His name was Francisco Westphal. Or Westphal. It was a German pastor from the United States, and he came and he began to teach us about Jesus and the second coming with his broken, weird Spanish. <laughs> and we have to deal with that for 5, 10, or 15 years until somebody came with a better Spanish and began to teach us. So now I'm returning the favor. <laughs> I'm coming to you from Argentina, more than a hundred years later, with my broken English. And you know what? You're going to have to deal with that. Because I'm in control now for the next 30 minutes. That means welcome, alright? That means that my name is Walter Castro and yet I'm from Argentina and my job in Florida Conference is to be uh, a church planting, can you? Yeah, it's good, right? Yes. And my job here in Florida Conference is to go around, go, you know, drive around up in north and south, east and west, and plant churches. And that's what we do with a group of church planters that we have in Florida Conference. I didn't grow up in this church. I was born in Argentina, and at the age of 12, kind of, Somebody, somebody that was a Seventh-day Adventist, he came to my house and began to teach us about the Seventh-day Adventist message. And we became Adventists. And the story is long, I'm not going to give you my whole story, but I came to the state and I began working in New York City, then in Ohio, Maryland, Virginia, Michigan, and suddenly I ended up here in Florida. And in Florida, my job is to plant all kinds of churches. And we are planting churches. Actually, Florida Conference is one of the fastest growing conferences in the United States. Amen. Not many conferences are growing. We have about 59 conferences in the North American Division. Not all of them are growing. In fact, some of those conferences are dying. They haven't planned a church in 10, 15, 20 years. And that's an issue for North America. And we are worried about it. Because we can believe in the message. We can teach about Jesus is coming soon. But there is a disconnection between what we believe and how we act. There is a, a disconnection between what we believe and the way that we do mission. And it seems like we have beautiful conferences, 59, and some of them are like, we're not growing, we're dying. And they ask all of these questions, is God with us? Is God really blessing us? Because that's what the Bible says, and we read Acts. That God is the one that is bringing people to the church. Amen. So we wonder, if God is not bringing people to some of our churches, what is the reason? Because we're supposed to be the remnant church. But we are shutting down churches in some places. And that's sad. We are shutting down churches, and we don't want to shut down churches. We need to keep opening up churches. Amen. Because God is with us. So we made a decision with Friday Conference that we don't care if we are doing things perfectly right, we are going to keep planting churches. Amen. 
we are going to plant churches for people. And Florida is one of the most multicultural <coughs> states that you can find. So we are planting English churches, we're planting Latino churches, we're planting Haitian churches, we are planting Filipino churches, Burmese churches, as long as they are human beings. Amen. Okay? Amen. As long as they're human beings, and I believe on what you're doing, I mean, smoking, sunglasses, glasses, that's perfect. I did that, I've been there, okay? I'm doing it every year. I smuggle, you know, dentists to Peru. I go to the Amazon. And we have to hire sometimes the stuff that we need because they don't want us to take some of the stuff. Not because they don't want, because they grab the stuff and they sell it in some other places. So they don't care about their own people. They just steal the stuff from you and from other Americans and said, grab it, sell it. Where? Black market. You're gonna buy it. Make my money by doing that. People, we have an amazing <coughs> mission field here. Amen. And if Jesus is not here yet, because God, because God is not done with his church and with his mission right here. That means that God is not done with you. So that's why we're planting churches. And in order to plant churches, we use volunteer lay pastors. We have about 90 volunteer lay pastors in Florida Conference. Our program is the largest church planting program in the whole North American division. In fact, they're asking us, how are you doing? How do you plant a new church every four or five weeks in Florida? Amen. A new church in four or five weeks. We are moving forward. We are reaching more than 65,000 members in Florida. Amen. Last year, we baptized 27 or more than 2,700 people. That means that we are growing. We truly believe in church growth, evangelism. And we don't know if we are doing everything right, but we truly believe that we need to do what God has called us to do. Amen. And it's to go after one more person, one more person. So that's why I admire this guy that came to Argentina more than 100 years ago. Without knowing the language, without knowing the food, the people, the culture. And he immersed in the culture. And right now we have one of the most beautiful churches in South America with more than... 150,000 Seven Day Adventists in my country and growing and growing and growing and a beautiful university and, and, and I, I cannot tell you the amount of blessing that we receive because of this guy that came without exactly knowing all the details but at the end he believed in the word. God will add. Trust the word. God will add. If we do the right thing God will add to the church those who are going to be saved. And this is the question. Are we doing the right thing right here? That's the question, John. Yes. Are we doing the right thing in New Smyrna? Yes. 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 Anything we do. I can see that. And that's why John is like, Pastor, please help us. We have bigger plans. We need to kind of, you know, uh, 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 make a bigger church. We need to do something because we have this beautiful space right here and we wanted to grow this church. And he's bothering us and calling us, Walter, we need to do something about it. Please send us money, find the donors. We need to expand our doors, our walls, and everything because we have a mission here Amen. in our church. Amen. Amen. So let me put it this way, we are shutting down churches and we are happy with churches like New Smyrna. Amen. Because it's growing. And it's growing and you're doing an amazing job. Four things I wanted to share with you and I'm, uh, and I'm short, okay? Um, yeah, 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 I'm short. <laughs> That's why I hate this kind of topic. Okay? I, I, I hate this kind of topic because
because this is a very racist talk. <laughs> it's for jobs, not for a short Argentinian guy. That's why you're going to see that every so often I'm going to have to like do this because I don't want you to think, what is the preacher, what is the preacher? <laughs> so, and then go to some other churches and the pop is even bigger. <laughs> this guy, Wemba, was almost more than six feet tall. Like a huge guy. You know, and some guys from Argentina, we are short, you know, we descended from the Italian guys, you know, all the family is Italian, so we're kind of short and stuff like that, so I have to deal with this all the time. John, I don't like it, okay? You have to get rid of this old stuff that is super old and get a crystal one. So you can get through at least. 21st century, okay? We're not using this kind of stuff anymore, right? This is like, you know, you have clothing right here, you got tie for people that don't use tie. Anyway, four things I want you to share. Listen, four things. We have done multiple studies about churches that are growing. Four things in all of those churches. And remember, we are shutting down churches. And we go to some of those churches and we do an assessment and we talk to them and we ask questions and it seems that they don't get it. Four things that are happening in churches that are growing. Number one, outreach is priority. It's the number one thing in every single conversation that they have is outreach. That's the only reason we have this thing that we call church. Amen. That's why we have a board meeting. The number one topic in every single meeting is outreach, 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 outreach. Are we winning somebody else? Is anybody else joining the church next month? Is anybody else believing in Jesus? That's the mission of the church. <coughs> the longer a church exists, the more concerned the members become with, them, with, with themselves and self-preservation. When we go to some of these churches, they worry about, no, we worry about ourselves, and we worry about the lawn, and the tree, and the parking space, and that's important. There is no one single conversation about outreach. Over time, churches become increasingly self-centered and self-served. It's just for us. It's just for ourselves. And we can never, never stop thinking, talking, praying about outreach. That's the only reason we exist as a church. Amen. And that's the only reason that hospital that is across the street exists. And that's the only reason we have something called Florida Conference. It's because we are trying to win one more person for Christ. Amen. And if we are not winning more, one more person for Christ, we have no reason to exist. Amen. So we talk to some of the churches. What is your outreach program? Oh, we don't, we don't, we don't have any. Okay, that's fine. There's no reason for you to exist. Shut it down. That's why God is now bringing people here. Oh, but we believe in the Seventh-day Adventist message. And look at the LNG White books that we have all over the views. But you are not doing the job. And we have to shut down churches because they lost. At some point, they lost the passion for the mission. And that's why we need to remind ourselves like constantly, especially now, especially now that we are so distracted with so many things and we don't know exactly what the reason of the Seventh-day Adventist Church is the reason for us to have a school, hospitals, churches. What is the main reason? The main reason we have every single thing that we have is because one more person is out there and one more person is out there trying to see if that person can believe in Jesus and make it to heaven. Amen. That's the whole reason of all of this. One more person. And that's my question to, you know, to you. Are you connecting with somebody else? Are you connecting with somebody else? Are you praying for that? Father, 
I want you to blame those missionaries that are doing amazing things in Africa. Forget about Africa. Forget about Malaysia. Malaysia. Forget about Peru. It's right here, around the corner. Amen. Amen. And we got to keep doing what you're doing because I'm doing it every year, twice a year. I spend my vacations going to Peru and the Amazon and, and mosquitoes are beating me all over. But I got to do it because over there nobody goes. Well, I will go and I will spend my money, the little money that I have as a pastor. I will do something for that, you know, group of people. Amen. So instead of changing the car and having the latest car that I can, 2017, oh my God, it's two years old. Oh my goodness, 75,000 miles. Oh my, my God, I need to change the car. Forget about the car. Do something with your money. God gave you the money so one more person also can believe in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Outreach is priority. When it's not priority in my life, it's not going to be priority in the church. Because the church is a group of people that come to this place. So when outreach is not priority in my house, it's not priority in my life, it's not priority in my, in my family, when I don't talk about this with my kids, it's not going to be priority in the church. Because the church is a reflect of what's going on inside of your house and your family. And at the end, is what is going on inside of your own personal life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. You might be a great Christian, self-centered. <laughs> Just for yourself. Oh, it's so beautiful to think about heaven. How beautiful it is. It's all about yourself and how you feel. And that is good. <coughs> but at some point, you got to move beyond Jesus said, Matthew 28, you know the word, right? Matthew 28, 18, that's the only reason we exist. Good things can happen in the church. And there are some important things that the church should do. But there is only one essential thing a church must do all the time, 365 days, no matter what, is Matthew 28. We exist so one more person can become a disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Can you read that? Matthew 28, verse 19. You know the word? Yes. 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 One more person. So, what is the car? What is the vehicle? What is the way? How do we how do we find that person? There is a 2,000 years old inside, and this is the second thing that I want to share with you. Okay, there is a 2,000 year old inside that any congregation can apply to reach one more people, one more person. And it is non Christians come to Christ and the church primarily through relationship with Christians. Okay? We can spend thousands of dollars in TV. And it's beautiful. Oh, what a beautiful TV. Three ABN, three angels, four angels, a thousand angels, whatever angels, okay? Out there. Radio. And stuff like that. Okay? Listen to the statistics. I can put a thousands of dollars on others can talk to behind a camera and all of that. Listen to the statistics. It's about personal relationship. Amen. Personal relationship bring twice more people to Christ than all of the other things combined together. Wow. Radio, TV, internet, you name it. It's personal relationship. Amen. It's somebody that believes connecting with somebody that is not a believer yet. So here is the question. How many non-Christian friends do you have? And if you feel proud about, oh no, you know, after 30 or 40 years in the church, all of my friends are Christians. <laughs> that is a mistake. In fact, that is a sin. In fact, you're not doing the will of God if that is your case or my case. I still remember when I became a Seventh-day Adventist. I was sitting right here like this kids right here. I was 12 years old and I was sitting about to stand and go to the baptism pool and the first elder, you know, came to us, to all of us and said, guys, stand, stand, stand. He said, 
turn around. So we turn around, and he said to us, look at the people. They are your new family. They are your friends. In fact, they're supposed to be the only friend that you need to have now. Because they're Christians. And all of your friends need to be Christians. So, as I was listening to this guy, something in my mind, you know, told me, you know, the first elder is a nice guy, but don't listen to the old dude. <laughs> so, I did it right. I didn't listen to the guy because I still have friends in Argentina. I grew up with those guys. I played soccer with those friends. And 47 years later, I still have friends that are not Christians. And when my friend in Argentina got divorced, who do you think he called to ask for guidance and direction? He called me his friend that now is a pastor. When I go back to Argentina, you know what he does? He called me every single day because he just wanted to talk and learn and now through Skype and different other you know uh, 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 phone apps he said Walter please don't ever disconnect with me you are my friend you're like my brother how in the world I can now you know how in the world I can reject this friendship because he's not a seven day Adventist so we go out we eat together we have fun we talk and I know that one day, one day, the Lord is going to open the door for him to say, You know, Walter, I want you to believe in that, Jesus. Amen. Amen. That you, when you were 12 years old, you gave your life to, and now you're a pastor, and you're a preacher, and you travel all over. So, what is the network? It's friendship, 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 friendship. The Bible says that a real friend sticks closer than a brother. Okay? Now, next weekend we have our training, voluntarily after training event in Cancun Agua. We're going to give away thousands of cars. And we call it the one car, one, one, one. Because we are going to begin a heavy, super heavy, aggressive, intentional prayer time and season of prayer for one person during one minute for one month. <clears throat> so imagine that you suddenly identify one person that is not a believer. <clears throat> and you say, Father, I'm going to pray now to see if my boss can give me five more dollars or 20 more dollars per hour, <laughs> or if I can change my car, or if I can buy this house and buy a bigger house that you don't need, okay? Or oh, if you have three dogs, oh, Father, help us to find another dog. You don't need more dogs. You don't need more cars. You don't need a bigger house. Okay? What you need is somebody to witness. Amen. There is nothing more joyful to see somebody that you guide, that you personally guide that person through the Bible study and suddenly that person begins to believe and suddenly that person makes a decision say yes. Thank you, John. I gave my love to Jesus because you taught me about Jesus. And you can see that person coming through the water baptism. The joy is unbelievable. So we're going to start to pray for one person, that person, one person, for one minute, for one month. And we're going to ask the Lord to give us that miracle. That miracle is when the Lord makes a connection when that question opens up for you to begin to witness it's a miracle it's a divine intervention between you and that person that is not a believer and when you begin to pray for that miracle God will give you that divine intervention with that person Amen. Father give me Give me the opportunity to share something. And let me tell you something. People doesn't really care about what you believe. Number three. 
People don't care about what you believe. They don't care about the 28 fundamental doctrines of the seven days of the church. You think people are going around asking for, you know what, I care about something, the seven day of the church. You know, the 27, the 23, the 16 doctrine. People don't care about that. People don't care about the 144,000. People don't walk around the neighborhood asking, hell, heaven, stuff like that. Just here this morning, there were so many people raising their hands. I wanted to ask for somebody's getting into the divorce. I wanted to ask for somebody's sake. I wanted to ask for, I'm going to make a trade. Listen, felt needs. Felt needs. That is the connection. Okay? That is the connecting point. The connecting point. When you see this bulletin right here, and you see the amount of people right here that are requesting prayer, that are Christians, none of them. I bet you none of them are worried about pray for me because I don't understand exactly this Bible verse or I don't understand if the black horse of, of Revelation is black or black with a little... People don't care about that stuff. These people right here are Seventh-day Adventists. Amen. And they are asking for prayer. Because they have a need, and all of them are asking for a felt need. Something is going on in my life, and I need to see God intervene. Whether it's a divorce, financial need, a son that is derailing, is going through a rough time in their life. So imagine the people that are out there. What is the connecting point with people? It's exactly the that. They're going through tough situations in life. Most unchurched people are now walking down the street <coughs> worrying about theological things. So don't begin the conversation with somebody. Let me ask you something. Are you going to hell or are you going to heaven? <laughs> That's one of more, that is one of the most stupid questions that you can ask to an unchurched person. Do you believe in the Sabbath or do you believe in Sunday? Do you know about the Sunday law? That's another stupid question that you can ask. What are you talking about Sunday law? People don't care about the Sunday law. People just don't care. People who care later about theological issues, when they figure it out that you care for them because they're going through rough situations in their life. My marriage is getting destroyed. My son is getting lost. I'm losing my job. I'm losing my house. I'm losing my... And when people are going through a tough situation, a Christian person is right there, connecting with them. Just imagine Jesus. He was walking and suddenly he made a big mistake, you know, to the eye of the disciple. He derailed, he changed his route, and went straight to Samaria and met a person. It was a woman at noon. That was a horrible mistake for a rabbi in the time of Jesus. And I'm not going to explain why, but that was a horrible mistake. Meeting a woman at noon at that well, not for a rabbi. That was a horrible mistake. She wanted to discuss, but Jesus went straight to a felt need. Water. You came over here because you need water, right? Yes, I need water. Let's talk about water. You're a seven-day Adventist, right? Yes, I am. How do you deal with loss? Well, you're a seven-day Adventist, right? How do you deal when you're about to lose your job and you don't know what to do? Well, you're a seven-day Adventist, right? You know what? My son, he just made a decision, a terrible decision. I don't, I don't know how to deal with that. Well, let's begin the conversation. Fail needs. That's the connecting point with people today. 
50 years ago, it was totally different. We used to fight with people. We, you know, we used to fight through uh, about theological things. And if we win that battle, okay, I'm going to listen to you because you know a lot about the Bible. Today, nobody cares about what you believe. This is what the new generation think. This is the way that they think. You can believe whatever you want. That is your problem and that is your own choice. I believe whatever I want. And if you think you're right, you're right. Don't bother me. I just don't care.